multi-generational living, especially for children and parents, is on the rise. In fact, there are now more than 13 million multi-generational homes in America. While this lifestyle has plenty of benefits for both generations, it can also be detrimental to your health if you're not careful. So is multi-generational living for everyone? Hi, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise. In this video, I'm going to break down why multi-generational living may not be for you. Some people might think that having their parents or grandparents live with them will give them some nice company and help out around the house. But there are many things to consider before you take on this type of living arrangement. For example, do both sides have different values? What about when you're just trying to have your own family time in between work and all these extra responsibilities? And what if your grandma can't stand your partner or vice versa? So let me tell you how I think a multi-generational household is not for everyone. Lots of people under one roof means less privacy. I started living with my parents again in my 30s after a decade of having lived on my own. It was an interesting feeling having my parents under the same roof as a full-fledged adult. Though I appreciated having more family members around and loved having my kids be able to interact with their grandparents on a daily basis, I forgot what it was like not having full privacy again. Before, I could come and go when I wanted without having to tell anyone. And if I didn't want company, nobody was knocking on my door at any given time of the day. But now with multi-generational living, it's different. Given that we have four adults at home, it's a rare occurrence to be home alone, which means someone is always there. If I'm cooking something in the kitchen, my dad walks by asking, what are you cooking? When my wife is trying to get the kids ready for school, my mom has to interject her opinion about the school outfit. I want my own personal time to decompress after work, but my dad needs his phone fixed because it locked him out. If you're someone that highly values full privacy, multi-generational living may not be for you. Having roommates might be one thing, you can have firm boundaries, but we all know when it comes to family, boundaries are more of a recommendation. And if you can't accept that, you should reconsider living in a multi-generational household. Communication is difficult between generations. At workplace, you hear oftentimes people discussing the difficulty of communication between millennials and Gen Xers or now between millennials and Gen Zs. With only a few years between generations, we already feel the strain of communication. Now, try that with decades and with your own parents. There is a multi-generational gap that is very hard to cross, which means there are plenty of misunderstandings, arguments, and miscommunications that happen between the two groups at hand. My wife was already six months pregnant when we started living together with my parents. I remember the night that we were preparing to go to the hospital. Like any good husband, as soon as my wife gave me the signal, I grabbed the go-to bag and started heading out the door. My dad, having grown up in a generation, a country, and a time period where men didn't accompany their wives to the hospital for childbirth, looked at me and asked, where are you going? I still remember the look on my wife's face. What the you say? I gently guided my wife to the car and with a promise she could have anything she wanted after this ordeal and hoping to God that I had one of those men in black memory erasers. I am just a figment of your imagination. My dad didn't mean any harm by his comments. He just blurted out what came to his mind based on his experience and upbringing. Now, after a decade of living together and many similar miscommunications that we had to work out going both ways, we have come far in better understanding each other. But it would be an understatement to say we were just able to work through it. It took many tearful nights and discussions. If you're someone who struggles with communicating well with your parents or grandparents, or if you don't feel you want to rock the boat with your parents, then multi-generational living may not be for you because it only exasperate the problem. Grandparents can't do things they enjoy as they may need to care for kids. The multi-generational life could be even more difficult for some grandparents because they may need to take care of their grandchildren, who are often very young and require a lot of attention. Things that our grandparents might want to do can't be done anymore because they have to take care of the kids, such as going out for dates or traveling with friends and family without having any obligation. It's important that multi-generational living is something all parties involved agree on before making it happen. Something my wife and I made sure we were all on board with my parents before we made the decision. If your parents are wanting to enjoy their own independence after retirement, multi-generational arrangement may not be for you. And it's important that both parties discuss their expectation in detail. Parents have less time to spend with their children due to having extra responsibilities. This might be true if living in a multi-generational household brings in more responsibilities. For example, I joke with my wife that I feel like I'm my parents' tech support when they need help with their iPhones, 
their HR department when they're having issues with their Medicare coverage, their hired help that pulls out weeds from my mom's garden or rearrange their room furniture. Don't take me wrong, I enjoy being able to help out my parents and consider it a blessing. But at times I wonder if I would have more time back if we weren't living in a multi-generational household. And if your parents are heavily relying upon you for everything, this could be very true. So if multi-generational living is something you're considering, the best course of action will be to spend some time with your parents or grandparents and see what their needs are on a daily basis. The last thing you want to do is tarnish your relationship with your parents because you felt it was too burdensome and it affected your family's well-being. You and your spouse might get into arguments more often because of the extra people in the house. It's not just multi-generational living that might make you and your spouse more likely to argue. Many married couples say they argue about the color of a room in their home, what kind of TV channel should be watched, or how to spend discretionary income. But if there are other people around who live with them, then arguments will be amplified tenfold. It's not to say multi-generational living doesn't have its benefits, but it comes with a lot of responsibility and emotional burden for all parties involved. So if you and your spouse are someone who needs their space, or feels like they can't express themselves around family members because they're afraid of hurting anyone's feelings, then multi-generational living might not be for you. It's important to discuss multi-generational living with your spouse and see how they feel about the idea before making any decisions. Because at the end of the day, the multi-generational arrangement is only going to work if you and your spouse are fully on board. It can be hard on your mental health. One of the most important things to consider when choosing multi-generational living is how it can be emotionally draining for all parties involved. With all the risks that I reviewed in this video, it's not just the parents who may experience this, but grandparents and children as well. I know that both my wife and I felt the burden of multi-generational living, and with all the daily responsibilities, there were many times when both my wife and I just wanted to give up and live separately. It's important you have a plan for how your family can deal with these heavy emotional burdens because it's not something that goes away overnight. We make it a priority to create alone times, sometimes just my wife and I, and other times just us and the kids. I would recommend you make you and your spouse's time a key priority in this arrangement. If we didn't have our alone time at least once every few months, we don't think we would have survived this long. Make sure multi-generational living is something that your spouse and your parents want as well before moving in because it can cause frustration for everyone involved if they don't feel like their needs are being met or there isn't enough attention given to them. That being said, multi-generational living can be a rewarding experience and it's important to have an open dialogue with your spouse, parents, and grandparents before making decisions so everyone is on board. And I'll say from personal experience that multi-generational living has been one of the best decisions of my life. I get plenty of quality time with my family and that's something I would never trade. It is an emotionally draining process for multi-generational living to work. One that can be very challenging and require a lot of patience, understanding, and communication from all parties involved. It's not something everybody should go into doing without first giving it much thought and consideration before making up their minds. Thank you guys for watching. If you found value from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of my other upcoming videos.